In this video, I'm going to talk about the theory behind hypothesis testing. Notice that I have a collection of students. There are 540 students. We have their gender and a grade on a test. So this is the same information in a case table. Let's pull down a plot and look at the information here. So we're going to put grade on the x-axis and the sex attribute on the y-axis and create parallel dot plots. Our question is going to be, uh, is there a statistically, significant, statistically significant difference in the means of these two groups of students? So something going on between the genders here. So let's use the ruler tool, snap the left ruler to the lower mean and the right side of the ruler to the higher mean and we get a difference of 1.4 so let's go ahead and lock this so let's move this out of the way and lock it so the question is is this difference significant well the way we can test that using the theory behind hypothesis testing would be to randomly assign students to two different groups so we're ignoring the gender category. First I have to rank them from 1 to 540 so I'm going to add a variable in here that will take care of that for me. So unique rank will order the students and I'm going to use a random digit generator by typing in the word random this generates a number between 0 and 1 and unique rank is going to order those from 1 to 540. Once we have a unique ranking of the students which is random, as I scroll through this you'll see that it's random, we need to divide these students into two groups. I'm going to actually just split these in half so I'm going to call it group and we'll use an if then else logic to split this group. So we'll have rank. If I hold down the control key I get less than or equal to 270. We'll split our groups in half. Tab over. Do a double quote A for the first group and then tab down double quote B for the second group and apply. Every time I click on control Y this unique rank changes because it's a random digit um, generator in there and the grouping will change. So now we are ready to pull down another plot that's going to show the difference in the two grades, the scores that these students have, but depending on the group that they're in. And so let's take grade again and put this on the x-axis and create our parallel dot plots. We can stack these, put in our average. Let's use our ruler tool and we'll go in the same order. If gender doesn't matter, would we get a difference of 1.4? So that kind of brings us to our hypothesis statement. The null hypothesis would say that the means of these two groups is equal. And the alternate hypothesis would say that the mean score for the, for the girls is 1.4 units higher than the mean for the guys. On this particular uh, random assignment of the two groups, we have a difference that's actually in the other direction of negative 1.1. If we randomize the groups again, we get negative, one, negative 0.6, and now we get 0.3 and negative 0.2. Oh, that's what I want to do. Okay, so I don't want to lock it on the group. I want to lock this on sex because I want to see that I've actually kind of randomly assigned these students to the different groups. So are we getting all of the guys up here and all the girls in the in the lower dot plot? And, and we're not. It's, it's pretty random. It's pretty mixed up. Are they equal amounts? Probably not, but they'll be close. So let's turn on our number tool so we see that we've split this data set in half. You do not have to have equal um, counts in your two groups to conduct a hypothesis test situation, but I set it up this way so we do. 
So some of you may have guessed where I'm going next with this. I want to capture this difference over a number of random samplings and we're going to actually do this 100 times. So let's go ahead and set up our history tool and I'm going to click on the difference. I have a number of options but I actually want to capture that difference. So we want to see over 100 samples. How many times is that difference going to be greater than 1.4? So let's ratchet this up to 99 because we already have one in there and we will collect 99 measures. These are the differences between the two groups, um, between the means of the two groups. And I'm going to pause as this runs. Okay, so we have collected 100 differences between the means in our two sample groups. So let's pull down a plot and take a look at what we have here. We're going to graph this in a dot plot. So let's separate this out and stack them up. And we expect to have a fairly nice distribution here. Let's use a reference line to locate this 1.4. So when was the difference above 1.4? And I'm going to use the divider tool set to two divisions here so we can actually count those. In this particular run of 100, we have 27 or 27 percent of the time. So it's hard to adjust both of these at the same time. So let's see, 25, 27. So we we're, we're you know this is going to be an approximation here. They're very close. Okay, so approximately 25% of the time I um, was higher. So now the question is, is that statistically significant? I mean, just because of chance, we got 25% of these groups with a difference of, of 1.4 or even higher, okay? So I'm going to run it one more time. So I'm going to pause this and run it one more time so we can see because, you know, 25 might have been, you know, unique to that set of 100 samples that I, that I put together. So I'm going to pause it and run this again. Okay, so what I did is I went over here into this options menu and I said delete all history cases so I could run a new um, collection of 100. And here's our graph. This time we had 14 that were higher than the 1.4. I'm not, there we go. So approximately 14. So if I had 25 in the first run and 14 in the second run, you're seeing that there is a, a level of variability here. So the question is, let's see, let's run it one more time. So we can at least have the average. So those are pretty far apart. Let's get, get an average of at least three runs here. So I'm going to pause it again, delete those cases, and create one more plot. Okay, so in this run we got 13 that were higher. So what I did is I, you know, I cleared the history, ran it again, got 13. Um, if I average those three, I get something around 17. So if we average those, we say 17% of the time I'm getting something that's higher than the 1.4. So due to chance, this difference doesn't look to be very significant. I'm going to scroll over here and show how I put this data into Fathom. Um, I copied the collection and I pasted it into a new collection in Fathom. I dropped grade here for the first attribute and sex in for the second attribute. The null hypothesis says that population mean of grade for F equals that for females. I mean females equals that for males. The population of grade for females is greater than that for males is the alternate hypothesis. We are going to reject the alternate hypothesis. It doesn't mean we're accepting the null, but we are definitely rejecting the alternate because we have a p-value of 0.21 and our cutoff is usually 5% or 0 0.05 to decide if something is statistically significant. If it was significant, we would reject the null hypothesis and say they're not equal.